Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to do a Scottish beer once again and this is another one of the breweries that's only recently opened and I always enjoy doing reviews from these little breweries that are just popping up. This brewery's only opened in the last year or so actually. I'm filming this review for you in January 2018 of course, just for those of you that will watch it later on. So for this one we're going to head through to Clyde Bank near Glasgow and we're having a taste of a beer from Late Night Hype Brewing Company. This one's called the Boomtang IPA and it comes in at 6.7% ABV. It should be quite an interesting one. They've added pineapple to this beer. It had a rating of 3.6 I think it was or 3.7 when I checked out on Untapped earlier. So that's a really interesting entry and a good level actually for a brewery that's just kind of starting up. There wasn't a rate beer rating for it simply because it's such a small production beer and it only seems to have come out as well. So always interesting to try new, new beers from new breweries of course and I hope you guys as always enjoy my take on this one. So anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery briefly if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my up future reviews that hopefully I can do from out of town brewing very first time I'm trying one of their beers like I said there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city or state whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the Scottish beers that are reviewed for for you. That's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review and do let me know about some little Scottish breweries that I might not have heard of because there are loads of them popping up these days. So anyway to tell you a little bit about Late Night Hype Brewing then. So Late Night Hype Brewing was founded by Michael Shaw and Sam Turner in 2017 and they'd actually started brewing when they were at university together as a means just to kind of cut down how much they were actually spending on beer because they did have a bit of a taste for craft beer but as a student of course it can be quite expensive. But Sam had previously worked in sales management and also in his family's business and he said that uh, working in his family's business basically allowed him to build up the confidence to go and start his own company but Mike had actually been the head brewer at St Andrew's Brewing Company over in Fife and he designed many of their beers that went to become quite popular and a number of those won awards and things like that as well so they did have quite a good pedigree just when they were starting up but with their savings they went out and bought a second hand 5 BBL kit from down in Manchester and they moved it to a site that they'd rented in Clyde Bank and uh, apparently they've uh, really been struggling to meet demand I mean they've been doing very very well by all accounts and it was quite unusual like I said uh, I got this beer I think in uh, Bridge of Allen when I was at home over Christmas I'd never seen it before so you know this that kind of tells you that after a couple of months they're starting to get their beers out and about so I do see good things uh, if that's how it's going for them so far but apparently the name Late Night Hype comes from the fact that they joked along for a long time over a couple of beers in the evening that they wanted to actually start their own brewery and they decided to, to, to kind of go for it basically and they say the late night hype took over so that was why they uh, they decided to name their brewery like that so quite an interesting story there's quite a lot of brewery names come up over a few beers of course which is to be expected but it should be interesting to see how these guys get on over the next few years and it is really cool actually to try a beer from these guys just a couple of months after they've started up so yeah let's see how we get on then so yeah like I said this one is a 6.7% IPA and uh, it has, they've added pineapple to it. It doesn't say what hops and malts and things are in it. Uh, some of them do. That might be something that they'll add in the future, of course. They do have that little pineapple symbol at the back. I'm just checking on the camera control that you're seeing this. See, quite simple artwork, but it really is... It's yeah, pretty simplistic and quite well done. I do quite like that. Uh, plain bottle cap on this one, of course. Again, that's maybe something that will change in the future. But without further ado then, uh, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting. As I always say as well, the brewery website's in the description below if you want to have a little bit of a read further about this brewery. Um, but a special thank you as well to Sam, actually, because I was struggling to find information on these guys to do the video with. And Sam very kindly wrote me a sort of company bio. So... There is quite a wee bit of sediment in the bottom of this beer, so I'll chuck that in a little bit later, but we'll try it just as it is just now and see how we get on. So yeah, as you would expect from an IPA, this one's poured a nice kind of hazy sort of, I don't know if it's quite a blood orange colour, but a quite rich orangey colour. There's a half finger of a frothy kind of beigey sort of cream head on this one actually um, but yeah it pretty much looks exactly as you would expect from an IPA it's got one or two little bits of uh, sediment floating around or quite a wee bit actually I must have not 
Uh, I must have shaken it a little bit when I was showing you guys it on the video, but yeah, little bits of sediment in there. It's all natural, of course, so who cares? One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass there, and uh, a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of the head. So pretty much appearance-wise, exactly what you'd expect from an IP, and there's some nice kind of fruity esters coming off this uh, as we kind of move it around. So let's take a closer look at the aroma then and see how we get on. It actually smells really orangey. I do wonder from the aroma if there's a wee bit of Amarillo in there because I'm getting some of those. The Amarillo, of course, always gives you the juicy, oily oranges, if you like. The things like, um, like, uh, the, oh, the name's gone out of my head, Mosaic. Mosaic always gives you a little bit of that more kind of lighter, uh, slightly tropically tangerine kind of thing. This one, to me, smells really like uh, sort of oily orangey, so I do think there's some Amarillo in here. There's a wee bit of pine, that pineapple that they've added to it, you can pick up a little bit of that as well. And there's a wee bit of a kind of almost lemony thing, a little sort of lemony sherbet, I think. Maybe some centennial, I don't know. It's always fun to guess the hops. When you pick up the fruits, you can always kind of think a little bit and see what hops are in it. The yeast, the notes I'm getting from the yeast in this one, it's got a bit of a bready and slightly caramelly base to it. But it does, I, I do recognise that yeast. I've had beers with that yeast in it, but the name, of course isn't coming to me. But yeah, a little bit of bready character, some biscuit and some kind of caramelly notes in there as well. Malt base is pretty much what you'd expect. There's a little bit of kind of floral aromatic. It's a little bit a little bit lighter and uh, grassy as well, but fruit wise it's pineapples, it's oranges, there's a little bit of lemon in there. And there might be a wee bit of a kind of darker grapefruit or something, but I'm thinking it's mainly orangey and pineapple. But it smells quite nice actually. So take a little bit of time and just enjoy the aroma before you actually get stuck into it. It's a bottle conditioned beer, by the way, which is why there's quite a bit of sediment in it. But without further ado then, let's get stuck into this one. This is the Boomtang IPA from Late Night Hype Brewing over in Clydebank near Glasgow. Let's get stuck in. Slange. Yeah, that's a pretty decent beer, actually. So yeah, it does, it's quite, um, how do you say, the malt base on this one is kind of quite apparent. It's got a good little bit of that kind of bready sort of yeasty thing coming out of it. And as you can see, there is quite a wee bit of sediment in there, so that might skew it a little bit, bear that in mind. But yeah, the malt base on this one. It's quite nice. It's got a little bit of a kind of grainy character just underpinning it. On top of that, you start to get a little bit of a kind of um, bready thing. There's, and if you go right into the middle of the palate, there's a little bit of a sort of caramelly thing. But what's interesting about this one, like I'm saying, is it's the way that sort of grainy character just pushes its way out of it. It has got a little bit of an almost kind of toasty, grainy note to it, which is quite interesting. But like I say, some bready character that just blankets the middle of your tongue and then a wee bit of a caramelly note in the middle, a little bit of a kind of biscuity sweetness as well, but it's really the graininess in this one starts to push its way out, which is quite interesting. So yeah, there's a wee bit of character from the yeast in this one as well, you can pick up, it's almost, this beer is quite interesting because it almost has that um, sort of homebrewed feel to it, they'll be us using one of these yeasts that are fairly common in home brewing, I would think, just going by the, the sort of flavours you get from it. I had a beer the other day from a, from a brewery just near Newcastle, and they were using US05, so when you were tasting that beer, it really did have that kind of home brewed feel to it, and this one kind of has that, that sort of same feel to it, which is, it's, it's always a little bit nostalgic when you do that. I've home brewed a little bit, and it reminds me of some of my home brewed beers that I've done. But yeah. It comes together quite nicely, actually. In the back corners of the palate, there's a little bit of earthiness there. As you come further forward along the sides of the tongue, there's a wee bit of herbal character, but you can feel the sort of floral aromaticity pushing its way out as well. Around the very front curve of the palate, there's a little bit of grassiness there. That's where you're starting to pick out some of these pineapple flavours as well. Because when you add fruit to the beer, of course, you can always distinguish that from, uh, from the, the sort of esters that are extracted from the hops because they'll always come out in the little bit behind the front curve of your palate. You get that little oily bubble, and with this one, in that little oily bubble just behind the front curve of your tongue, you can pick up a little bit of that orangey ester that I was talking about. So I do think there's a bit of amarillo in here. 
I'm not sure about the centennial in terms of the flavours that come out of the beer, the earthiness as well, I should say that, the sort of earthy bitterness that this beer has starts to push its way out a little bit later too, but you can feel the pineapple around the edge of your tongue. When you add fruit to the beer, it always kind of brings down a little bit of the IBU and it's the juicy flavours from that come in on the edge of your tongue and you can definitely pick up that in this beer. But yeah, it comes together quite nicely. As I say, the thing that's kind of unusual for me in this one is the sort of um, grainy character that the beer has, which is, is, um, is quite interesting and quite unusual. It's almost like it's got this kind of really old base to it, but it's got the sort of American uh, hoppy top to it. So it's a really kind of unusual combination. And it works. It, can, it does work, actually. So if you enjoy uh, kind of these real ale things with a bitter base, I think this one's going to kind of be a good entry beer for you into... Um, into some of the, the IPAs and things like that. Let's put the last little bit in with the, the kind of sediment and things and just see how we get on with that. When you put the sediment in it actually, that's quite interesting because it takes away a little bit of that kind of grainy character that was in the beer. It does help it smooth out a little bit. I actually think it's a little bit better with the sediment in it, which is quite interesting. Yeah, definitely see that. When you put the sediment in this one, it smooths out the bready flavours. It doesn't come across quite as grainy. And I do like that. You like a, I like a little bit of grain, but not quite as much as, they were, as uh, was kind of coming out of this beer originally but when you put the, the sediment in it it does come out it just smooths out that little bit more and then you start to pick up a little bit more of the kind of caramelly and biscuity flavours in the middle of the palate too. So I think it's a fair it's fair to describe this beer as a little bit of a um it almost has a little bit of that kind of bitter base to it, the sort of English style bitter base with the grainy notes that the beer has. Uh, they're maybe using English malt in it of course that might be the thing. But then on top of that, it does have some of these American hoppy characters and some of the nice, the orangey fruits really sit there into the aftertaste as well. And the beer does get a little bit juicier the more you drink of it. And the further you progress through the taste, of course. But yeah, I think that's definitely a good way to kind of, to kind of summarise this one. In terms of the mouthfeel then, it's mid-bodied. Carbonation does have a little bit of a prickle to it. It's got a little bit of oily character, but mainly it's more of a wet mouth feel than anything else. It's not quite as oily as some of the beers I've come across. The malt base on this one, like I said, was the interesting point. It does have a little bit of a kind of grainy character to it. That kind of pushes up the bitterness a little bit. There's a wee bit of sweetness in the middle of the palate, but that doesn't overpower the kind of grainy bitter parts of the beer. A little bit of IBUs, not too much of IBUs from the, the hoppy character on this one, a little bit of juicy fruit, particularly around the front edge of the tongue where the pineapple comes out, you get a bit of the orange as well, um, but it's, it's fairly nicely balanced this one, I think more of the bitterness from this for me comes from the, the malt base and the kind of yeasty characters which is quite interesting, but overall it's a nice beer, I would quite like to try it on tap and see how it comes out, and they do have another IPA, I think they've got a pale ale as well, so I'll have a little look at those and see how they come out, but this one to me it has that kind of proper, uh, almost homebrewed quality about it, which is quite interesting. I had, as I say, um, I forget the name of the, the brewery's gone. The name of the brewery's gone right out of my head now. But I had a beer like this from uh, from a brewery just outside of Newcastle, and it was it was really good. And this one does have that kind of homebrewed yeasty character to it, which is quite interesting. So have a go at this one yourself and see what you think. And it will be interesting to see how this brewery can progress over the next little while. And I will see if I can try a couple of the other beers as well. I was also One of the things I was also interested with this is the, the bottle that they've used. I've not seen bottles like that since I tried some beers from Geiringer up in Iceland. They had some really nice IPAs as well. But I'm a really interesting beer, this one, and I hope I can try some more beers from these guys in the future. So yeah, it's been really cool to review this one for you. As always, let me know your own thoughts on it in the comment section below. So, as I say, it's always interesting to try new beers from different breweries that are popping up across Scotland. And I'm sure I'll review some more beers from in the future. But a nice kind of almost homebrewed feel, feeling IPA from this one with a little bit of an unusual malty character. So have a go at it. Let me know your own thoughts on it in the comment section below, like I said. And thank you for watching. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer. Check out my social media, like I was saying. And uh, let me know some other breweries that are popping up as well. So until the next time, it's Slans just now. And I'll catch you guys very soon. Boomtang IPA from Late Night Hype Brewing Company over in Clyde Bank in Glasgow. Cheers.